good and all the times our biggest event is coming in August our DVBS and this year we are trusting God for 4,000 children and that means you must give me a child from each family here so you have a few months look for a child <laughs> and bring them for DVBS either from your neighbor or from the school somewhere will give us details as you go along, and the Lord is going to bless us. Amen. And thank you very much for the support you give us to the children ministry. I, see, I still see a few young ones in the, in the midst of the service here. Parents, I want to encourage you. We have a service for every child who is in the service this morning, for both teenagers and both children who are school-going age, and they can sit in a class. They can sit in a Sunday school class also. So please ensure you drive them there and God is going to bless us. We are continuing with the safari. For those who are new to our church, we are engaged in a series called Safari to be able to help us to grow in the word deeper as we go along. And last Sunday, I'm informed that the preaching of the word here was powerful and God moved in a mighty way. And thank you, Pastor Stanley Mukoa, for talking to us about embracing health relationships in the family. And thank you for talking to the fathers also. And I want to emphasize here that single mothers and widows who were in that service were not discriminated. Because in this church, we believe in every one of us to take their place. It's on that our pastor chose to emphasize on the men of the service that day. And I think a few of us along the way lost the theme and the thesis of his emphasis. I want to encourage us this morning to be together and work together as a community, as a church, and be able to go. Today I'm going to share with us from embracing healthy relationships in the community. And the aim of this lesson is to help us to build and embrace wholesome relationships with each other in the community. And our object, I believe, by the end of this service, we'll be able to understand the importance of healthy relationships in the family. I believe that we're going to appreciate the roles and the blessings of different social status in the community. We are going to commit to form and embrace healthy bonds in the family. In that, by the end of this, we are going to understand that all of us have been created for fellowship. That all of us have been made to, be, to help one another. Somebody once said that I am because we are and you are because I am. That is the form of community this, mo this morning. And I want to begin by a form of introduction and say that a community is a group of people living in the same place or having particular characteristics in common. People who come together and they share norms, they share religion, they share values, or they share identity is what we refer to 
as a community. This morning here, I'll refer us as a community in this place because we are here sharing something together in common. Let me say that community, it promotes shared attitudes and inter interest through the avenues of relationships. The Christian community is defined by relationships that follow the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are here this morning because there's a call and there's a, there's a, there's a command and there's a savior who is leading us and that is why we are falling into place. And by the virtue of what God has done for us at the cross, by virtue of what Christ has done at the cross, that is why you and I can come here and call ourselves a brother and sister in the Lord. It is because we are defined by what Christ did for us at the cross. I have heard many saying that I'm a Christian and I don't shout about it. That means we won't take you like undercover Christian. For us, for what God did for us at the cross means that there cannot be some private relationships. I know we can do our devotions in private, all the things in private, but you can't live your life as a Christian in private. And say, no, I don't shout about it. You need to shout about it. The world may know that Jesus is Lord. I remember a few years ago, and I said this story here, when a friend of mine, those days when the passport and immigration was a problem in this country, and this friend of mine was a missionary to Kenya, and he had come from the U.S. and was coming to Kenya to get, a, to get his permits. And he went to Nyayo House as he used to go those days. How many remember those days? Am I, am I the only one? You'll take your file and your papers there, and things will just take months and months and they will disappear and you are told your file was here, it can't be seen, and all the hassle. So this man went to your house a number of days asking, told, no, come tomorrow, the boss is not there, go to this office, go to this office. I know what they meant by all those many offices. So one day this man went there and he got tired. And in the middle of the hall he began asking, are there not born again Christians who work in Nyayo House who can help me out? Are there no Christians who work here who can ensure my, my file is found? My friends, I tell you, those who don't shout about their Christianity, their place of work, Within seconds, the guy was taken aside and, no, brother, I'm a born-again Christian. And within hours, the man got his file and his passport and all the what is required to begin on. Yeah. Let me tell my friends, if all of us will embrace the light and the world, salt of the world, because, my friend, those bribes are given when you are seeing. Even City Hall, where we are sending a, a number of our members to go there and help us. That garbage is being thrown when we are seeing. When you block the road and put your wares there to be sold, we must embrace community. And that is why we say here as believers who are here, you can't live your life because the Christian faith finds its legitimacy when expressed in the daily interactions within the larger community. The Christian faith. And that's why Christ himself said in the Great Commission, he sent his disciples out there to go out there to the world and live out their faith in the world so the world may see by interacting. And that is why Jesus went to all sorts of people, the tax collectors, the prostitutes, the poor, the rich, to be able to walk with them and embrace healthy relationships. Let's discuss.
If we are going to embrace healthy relationships in the community, let me ask, talk to your neighbor and ask, what are some of the hindrances? First begin by asking this question. What does that handshake mean to you? And secondly, what are some of the hindrances to forming that in our country? Take to your neighbor, please. I want to see neighbors talk. I come in husband and wife talk. Sisters and brother talk. I know in the family house, but now talk. You have no neighbor turn the other side with the back upstairs. I see guys that are looking at me. I said we discuss. You can turn back to the other neighbor, the other side, and talk to somebody. This is interesting, eh? Great. Let me, let me hear a few thoughts in the congregation. What this handshake means to you? And what are, the, what, are the, what are some of the things that hinder us from forming good relationships in the country today? Anyone who wants to say something? Uh, we discussed with John, and we said that handshake has brought great peace, unity, in the country, we can now be able to walk in the streets without fearing economically, socially. Some people whose products had been boycotted, now they are selling. <laughs> um, some CEOs who had gone out of the country have come back. Uh, it, it means things are uh, taking form and somebody is feeling comfortable. However, f uh, secondly, uh, we said what the hindrances to that kind of unity is, uh, or a friendship is because People want unity that is on their way. Even if they trample on you, step on you, beat you, they want you to be united at their own cost. So we don't want to address issues that bring, especially we Kenyans, we like to put things under the carpet. And so we are hoping that uh, the, the handshake will uh, go into producing, uh, addressing of social, economic, historical injustices that have happened in this country and uh, that uh, they'll be true and lasting because even if you shake hands and uh, you have not addressed the thing that made you not to be friends it will occur again I will you will meet again and you won't I talk. hear you great thank you we yeah. agree that that dry bones can live again <laughs> amen <laughs> But what are some of the hindrances to forming wholesome relationships? You have said self-centeredness, a feeling of class, and uh, negative and negative people who say, I cannot um, associate with people from a certain uh, community. Those are, that, those are the points we raised. Thank you. Great. Clap for yourself. Good. This is a hot topic. But behind this handshake were believers who are fighting one another in these countries. I lost a number of friends on Facebook. I be, hope they are here. We can have a handshake this morning. The things that were happening in our country last year were because people in our country is because there are, there are dangers there's to avoid the dangers of selfish lifestyles. We have selfish lifestyles. We are saying with where we look at ourselves that my tribe is greater than your tribe. We have the numbers. You have no numbers. And I want to believe by God's grace that that handshake is going to help us country, Kenya, embrace community, all of us, wherever we are, and hold our hands together and move forward in our country. If we are going to have a healthy country, it must begin in a small community like Sitam Valley Road. Because God has placed a number of us here in different areas where if you go and light your small lamp, your small light, 
I tell you, Kenya can transform. Because of our selfish lifestyles, that is what we found ourselves in. Because the book of 2 Timothy tells us that there will be terrible days in the last days. There will be love, people will be lovers of money, lovers of themselves, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, and forgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with such people. If we are going to embrace a very healthy way of living in this country, we must make a mark and say, I am a believer, and I, this, this is my way. I can't indulge in such things, such things, and such things. And say, I am know what I, who I am, who I follow, and let us keep to our paths. Number two, God has called believers to be his Representatives in the society. We, have been, we are called to be light and salt. You are the salt of the earth, Jesus said. But the salt has lost its saltiness. How can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and be trampled by men. A number of men and women have lost their salt. A number of men and women in the church have lost their light. And that is why this country all the time, during the election period, we get into all these sorts of mess they are in. Yet we call ourselves 80% what? But the 80% are the ones who see them on the streets, burning people's houses, carrying placards, the 80% are the ones who take bribes. I want to encourage us that we need to go out there and be the light because God has called you. Wherever you go, you stand as God's ambassador. Do you know what happens to ambassadorial position? One thing I learned the other day, they can't be arrested as long as they're in their car because they represent their country. When it's that car you end in, whatever, you, you can't, he's in his country. <laughs> so the laws of his country apply. So when, imagine you are God's ambassador. How much will this country be knowing that every God, they know there's somebody called God here, a, a ambassador of God who's in this place. So I want to ask us to go out there and be salt and light. There's heightened need for positive role models in the Kenya we live today. Therefore, we are called to set up godly examples for others to follow in the community and society. You know, friends, I was, my heart was torn a few years ago when I heard the father of those boys who stole at KCB Thicker what he was saying when he was interviewed. You hear, remember what he said? He said, friends... Yes, my sons have done this. But what do you expect of young men and women who are growing, who have gone to college, to do when they see their leaders stealing millions of shillings and going scot-free? What are we telling our children? There is a need. The other day there was all this crying about this hashtag Ifikia Wazazi. How many heard about Ifikia Wazazi? We have all our teenagers on Sunday when we are here they're in town. Now, taking photos, all manners of photos, every design and every aspect. <laughs> because their, their role models are getting lost. We have come to a culture, even the mature people among us, we are clothes that have undergone global warming. <laughs> the clothes have become more, the, the, the global warming effects are becoming more and more. 
And they say the shorter you dress or the more skin you show, the more good you're looking. And so in your church here, they go now do those things in town now. All the streets now, if you go there, you find cameras of all sorts. And boys and girls are there, all positions of all this, because there's a need for role models in our country. 2 Timothy 4.12 says, Do not let anyone look down upon you young people who are here, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. The young men who are hearing my voice in this, I want to tell you that you guys can make an example. You can stand out to be salt. I keep telling young men every time I meet them that you can go and get a fish from the Indian Ocean. When you test that fish, there's no salt within it. Yet it lives in a sea that is full of salt. It means that as young men and women, we are able to, to make our life count in a world that is filthy, in a world that has got no morals. You can say, I am a believer, I'm a young man, I'm a young lady, I know who I am, I know who I have believed, and I can be an example in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Norms and values, which are the core in the community, are passed down through established relationships. And the Apostle Paul tells us that, and the things we have heard in me, say in the presence of many witnesses and trust and reliable men, will also be qualified to teach others. There are things we have lost along the way. I remember when I was growing up, it was not, there was no say about it. When you enter a bus and an older person comes, there was no question. True? You just stand up and tell them, Zeo Mama, Ka. Those were norms and values that were so good. Nowadays, when they see you, they put their headphones and loud music. And pretend they are, they are, they're even closing their eyes. <laughs> so they don't see you. <laughs> but you can go somewhere and find even people, a mature person, elderly. They're in the queue and we feel nothing about it. Atea pange line. You know... By God's grace, I went to India, and I came back. And I learned something about the Indian culture that I think you can learn from. In fact, in their buses, there's a place for the elderly. In every government place, there's a row for the elderly. Even at the airport, they have their own queue. If you're past a certain age, you, you are automatically don't even queue. You know where to go. I pray such things can find their way in the parliament, in the senate, so we can honor and give honor where honor is due. We must establish relationships and some good things we have learned. Let's, let, let, let us pass to our children and our children as we go along. The implication is that realizing that everyone is an important member of the community gives comfort to attend to the challenges that face the community together and celebrate the joys and the victories of the community. How do we relate with different people in the community? That's a big question we have today. How do we talk to one another, the young, the old, the rich, and the poor? How do we hold our hands together and form a community that is healthy? And the big question is how can we build relationships and conduct ourselves, a community with such diversity? Number one, if we are going to do that, we must follow biblical principles of building relationships. Friends, when we live according to God's command for community relationships, it helps us to relate and to be easy with each other, irrespective of age, social status, tribe, gender, or religious status. It also brings honor and glory to God in the entire community and leads to all members of the community feeling honored, respected, and needed. 
What we are saying, because all of us here, we are following biblical principles. We don't care what, what your second name is or where you come from. But we can hold our hands together and say, we, we are believers. We are following Jesus. We have some principles. And I can hold my hand, hold your hand, and build our country together, build our church together, and move forward. Despite our age, status, tribe, or gender. How do we relate according to our age? What I was beginning saying there before. We are given some conduct on how people must behave in the Bible according to their age. And Titus chapter number 2 verse 1 to 2 says that for the older men, you are told you must teach what is in accordance with sound doctrine. Teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound in faith, in love, and in endurance. So the older men are charged to earn their respect in the community by through their good and disciplined behavior. We are losing such. Have you seen very mature men, even in the media, acting like teenage boys? At times I, want, I look at the Friday magazine and I see Oyumze is in the wrong place. Shouldn't be here with the teenagers. Oh, you, you know, I'm on, Uyumze, I think, I wish I can, Uyumze is the wrong company. Because God has given the mature men some way of conduct. He says that the older men are to be charged to earn their, their respect the community. In the when I know that there's a mze in a particular place, I sit down and listen. Because they have shown me what it is to have the gray hair. See Rangi, see Rangi. My Moshimio, see Rangi, you see It is wisdom. They have gone through the ages and years, they have experienced. And so our young men and women are looking upon you, or elderly men who are here. But it says that you must be sober, temperate. Worthy of respect, self-control, and sound in the faith. So that now our young people can look upon you. Paul also appealed to the younger ones to relate with older men as one well with one's own father. Not with rebukes, but with gentle extortions. Have you seen where nowadays... <laughs> Young men can stand with their fathers and they argue. They even get mad and they go to their rooms and leave you there as the museum of the house. When I was growing up, oh, <laughs> I won't even think of that I can stand my mom and even do like this and talk to her. So the young people who are here God is asking us, when you meet an elderly person, treat them the same honor you give to your dad. The other day I was just telling another lady, I was, uh, just because of respect, and I was somewhere, I told Mama, please, pass. I mean, I'm not Mama. And I'm like, <laughs> I was just giving you honor. <laughs> giving honor. Where we come from, the word Mama is a name of respect. And she like, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, but I was just giving you honor to allow you to move forward. <laughs> that is what God is telling us. That if I'm passing by that door and I find there was this, young men just pull aside. Let there was this, Peter, and then follow there was this. Give them security. That's what the Bible is talking to us and saying. And they say, the young men, how do you live? We are told to live as self-controlled lives. The apostle Paul here seems to acknowledge that the fact the most difficult thing in, for our youth is to control their emotions and their passions. He admonishes the faithful believer to be a good example to the other people in the society by living self-controlled lives as a result of allowing the working of the Holy Spirit. Are you struggling self-control as a young person? 
allow the workings of the Holy Spirit and God himself to work within your life. It says, similarly, young men, get the young men to be self-controlled. In everything, set them as an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing to say bad to say about you. We've been told how to live as young people. Older women. God's word gives great responsibility for older women to take care of widows and teach what is good and train younger women, probably because naturally they are naturally naturals. Women are just, we, we, they are naturals by, by God given. If any woman who is a believer has widows in her family, she'll take, she help them out and let them, not the church, be burdened with them. So the church can help those widows who really are in need. And this topic was dealt very well by our deputy senior pastor, Duan Boro, how widows can be taken care of in the church. He says, all the women, if they are humble, definitely attract much honor and respect that will be treated as one will treat their mother. Likewise, it says, all the women must be re 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 reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderous, or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. They can train the younger women to, be, to love their husbands and their children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, kind and to be subject to their husbands so that no one will malign the words of God. Let me pause here and say, the mature women who are here have a God-given role. Find a young girl Walk with them. Embrace them. You know, if you have had mature women working with our young girls today, there'll be less separations. There'll be less divorce. Because there are some things they will learn from you. Because if you are married for 24 years with the same man, living in the same house, you had conflicts. Serious one, Pastor Mokoa. Serious conflicts. But by God's grace, you have learned how to so you can tell young people, you know, I know you guys are a pop -on generation. You want patience to grow in one, in one day. No. Grow up and take them pole pole. We'll have grow together and embrace each other as we go along. Teaching our younger women to be self-controlled, to be busy at home, to be kind and to be subject to their husband. That is the law of the mature women as the apostle Paul is telling us today. The younger women who are here, the alive type, the alive, those who are for alive, it is yours. Younger women are likewise to be treated by the church leaders with respect with the absolute purity as one will treat their own sister. When you see a young girl in the choir, a girl in the church, you know that's that's my sister, like treated her like a sister with respect and dignity and honor, instead of saying, "Uh huh, oh yo, okay." God is going to help us. Living in all purity with the younger sisters in the fellowship will safeguard believers from reproach and position them to be good examples for others to follow in the community. In many instances, younger women never experience loving, caring, and respective relationships in their own families. Accordingly, the church should provide for them the setting of an ideal family. There are some of us who come, and the only family we see is you and your husband when you come every Sunday. And we'll watch you. And so they'll say, I want you to come and help me, escort me to go pay my dowry. Because suddenly they come and they see how you come, you know, where you sit with your husband or your family, they see, and they admire something about you. And that is what we are talking about here, embracing each other and moving forward. Relationships according to social status is also given. Those of us who God has endured with some things in the society, and you term yourself maybe as rich, God says, God gives us riches to enjoy and share with other people in our communities and who are in need. God has allowed us to share Nothing. Maybe God has given you more things in your bucket, more things in your house, so that you can be able to help somebody else out there who is needy. 
In fact, we should not be having things in a church like Sita and Valley where we say that there's a child here who has no school fees. There's somebody here who has no job because among us here, if we embrace each other here, we can be able to lift each other slowly, slowly by God's grace and reach where you are. You can say, I think I can pay school fees for a needy child somewhere. Or I have a, an opening in my place. I can employ two young men in the church and give them some job to do. That is embracing each other and building healthy relationships in the community. But again, the question is that many of us take advantage of the worst of us who help a lot in the church. Let's be temperate. The poor, those who think they have nothing, they are poor. God identifies with you. We can also, should also be identifying them and standing with them in their circumstances. Proverbs 14.31 says, Whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker. But whoever is kind to the needy honors God. And allow, at times God allows us to have the not so rich among us. I'm the chairman of an estate where I live. And I've found that when God brings the so, so poor among us, times we want to, be, to, want to mistreat them badly. For example, just paying watchman fees. Oh, praise the Lord, Pastor Macau, praise the Lord. God is good. But you don't pay your 300 shillings to pay their scary. You must be followed. You must be followed. You must be followed. Your house help must well I'm back at 15th, 20th to get salary. When you come here, you are Bana Sifiwe. Bana Sifiwe. Amen. The masters, our walk with those who serve us and under us is a test of whatever, whether we are or who know God treats all with no impartiality. The masters who are here, you know, you know I've gone to homes, and let me say this here, and you can know who is a guest, who, is a, who doesn't belong to that family. It is shown black and white. It can be seen. The way they have been treated, you can just sense. But it says that your masters, there's a way God has given us a, a, a way to be able to help each other because God has no partiality. If he does, he did, a number of us will, I don't know where we will be. Servants who are here, who work for other people, or who are servants in whatever way God has made you. Service to others in the community is an act of attitude and choice. Not just meant for the lowly in status, but for all who are in Christ. All of us who are in Christ are called to be servants. Relationships according to religious status. Believers and unbelievers. Believers set an example to the rest of the community members through their love for one another. Those who see their good works give glory to God. And say, I heard this one of us who was sick. And all of us go there and embrace them and pray with them. And the neighbors say, wow. I want to join that church. That's how believers treat each other. I want to be part of that church. Relationships according to age and with those in authority. Parents and children. Children are commanded to obey their parents in the Lord and as the Lord and the, as the right behavior in the community. This brings longevity of the church children in the community. The word here is in the Lord. Not just say, you know, I'm your dad, you must obey me, I'm your father. We'll obey you, but you must be also in the right standing with God as in some matters. I bring this home. And the struggle we are having every other day as pastors. My girl Kayla finds a young man 
and they fall in love. They want to get married. And they bring this young man home. What is the first question that comes from the parent's mouth? You knew it. What tribe is this young man or this girl? And there you begin having issues. But let me tell you one thing. God is transforming Kenya. The rate at which our young people are intermarrying is overwhelming. So very soon we're going to have a, a, a new Kenya. So mama who are here, daddy will begin embracing the Kenya. Allow your children. This young man loves the Lord. And he comes from that tribe. You call those names and they have come home. Tell Jesus, I bless them. And do, just bless them. Let, their, let them go on their wedding plans and all those things. Don't have to begin calling your auntie. You know that girl. Go talk to her. She's lost her mind. No. She hasn't lost her mind. She's just in love and she wants to honor God. Parents are reminded to bring their children in such a way that they become useful community believers. Ephesians 6 verse 4 tells parents how to train their children in the Lord. The older and the younger. Leaders and followers are encouraged to be intentionally intentional in choosing the attitude of humility towards one another. The reason why we have problem with that handshake that I showed here, because many never believe that those two leaders could humble themselves and reach a place they can shake their hands. And because you are still full of ourselves up there, we can't believe that their balloon has been busted. But it has been. So God is asking believers to be intentional in choosing the attitude of human towards one another. Remember, everyone has a role to play in building this country in our community where we are. And each person has a significant role to play in enriching relationships in the community. The one another or each other first in the Bible are meant for us to learn from them. Love one another as God has loved you. There are many of those verses in the word of God that says, love one another, embrace each other, pray for one another. I say the greatest of this is love. A new commandment I give to you, Jesus said, is love. Number two, reach out to help one another. God has put us in the community so that we can encourage and build each other. Therefore, be devoted to love and honor one another. We are called to build one another and meet each other's needs in the community. And he says, love must be sincere. Don't come and hug me here and the back you're holding a knife to stab me. You know, I've seen guys in the church, they're coming, you know, they come and hug you, and, but behind they're holding a knife to stab you. When they go, you see that sister, you know, that brother, you know, he says, love must be sincere. If we are going to live together as a community. What's the implication of this? The idea of community gives everyone the opportunity to engage, to be involved, and to connect with others. We want to finish by looking at what hinders the building of healthy relationships in the community. Dealing with barriers in our walk with each other helps build lasting community bonds that everyone could draw from. I submit to us a few things that might hinder building of healthy community relationships. Number one, unforgiveness. This could hinder us from moving forward. And I want to ask all those who are hearing my voice here, it's high time we go out and forgive one another. Tribes in this country must come to a place they can forgive one another and join their hands together and move forward. 
Thank God for devolution and what he's doing. But I'm looking forward to having a Kikuyu governor in Siaya one of these fine days. I'm looking forward to have a, a, a Luo governor in Kiambu one of these fine days. That's what she said now. God is helping us to move forward. Because you said now, we forgive each other as a nation and move forward. No, say here we forgive, but instead say, hey, Lakini, you know your granddad parents did this to us. Forgiving and moving on. Number three, two. Oppression and exploitation of others in the community. It's serious. This is very serious. Taking advantage of other people. I don't know whether you heard about that man yesterday who was being interviewed. Who supplied things to NYS. And the wife has died because of stress. They supplied things to NYS. And they were the legitimate people who gave these goods there. They supplied. They have been the kid we paid for all those years. The wife who had taken loan to supply this NYS thing. Got sick because of stress. Was taking loans and she died. And for them just to hear that people who are paid billions who supplied air. And that man was saying, I still expect to be paid despite all this. Taking, exploiting other people. Oppression should end by God's grace. Some of this exploitation also takes place in the family. You know, many of us here, we come from families that are bigger. And we're the firstborn. Unachua mzigo yako yote. Mama ni mze is your work. I want people here who come from the same family to hold hands and support their elderly mothers. Don't say, when you're firstborn, you know all those things you take care of. Say, I'm the lastborn, but I can pay NHIF per month for my mom and my dad. Don't you say, no, me, me, you know, you're the one who lives in Kilelesho, you can take care of those. You are. Watch your mambo yako. Brothers and sisters can hold their hands together and support the elder, their parents. So that the firstborns or the lastborns, in the Kamba culture, the lastborns take the, the share of everything. If you're a lastborn in the Kamba culture, you know that, no, your mother, your elder parents belong to you. But now, let's say that the firstborn also let them chip in somewhere and support the lastborn and work together in this. The respecting and being appreciative of others. We are here as a community. By God's grace, I champion children ministry and social action. I also champion traffic ministry. Traffic. Do you know traffic ministry what traffic ministry is? I champion traffic ministry. At times I just whisper prayers when I when you see me out there, I'm doing my work. Not that I'm an idol, I'm doing my work. And this guy tells you, please come, 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 pack, pack up. If you want to gari, you go and pack where you think you want to pack. <laughs> and you come here, you're like, oh, victory belongs to Jesus. And out there, you're being disobedient. <laughs> we are community. You lift up your hands here at peace because there's somebody out there who sacrificed their time to watch over your car. And they need honor. They need respect. Because yeah. one day also you had no car. So they tell you, please just park here. Graciously, kindly, and say, thank you, brother. Have you seen them when it's raining? They still wanting to help you out. Those people are not paid by the church. No, you think that they are paid. So they're never paid. They're just volunteers like the choir, the ushers, the other people. They are not paid. They do that unto the Lord. Not being subject and respectful to rulers and those in authority.
This is what that is ailing this nation. Ailing many churches. Have you heard about one day in a church, they, have, they come and lock the church? Have you heard those stories? And say, Pastor so and so can't get in. Uta ingia, tumekufungia, tukutaki, we don't want you. And it begins in the church, and it grows to the community around and goes on. Subject and respectful to rulers and those in authority. I know I went through a lot of things in this country. But God has given us leaders. I don't care what to say or how they got in there, but I know God gave us leaders. We can't keep on shouting and fighting. As believers, let's get back to the word. The word says, everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. You may never like my Bishop David Oginde here. But the fact because Bishop is ordained by God to lead this time at this season, we must throw up the line and support him. Amen. Don't say, no, oh, gee, no. No, just say, we know God has put him there at such a point of time as us. It's our own duty to pray for him, to support him, and give him the respect that is due. It means that when you respect the leaders who are here, and leaders who are around there, not backbite leaders. You saw Pastor Macau, eh? you know his wife, how he dresses. You know, what kind of a talk is this in the church? Intolerance of others and failure to embrace cultural diversity. So we need help to learn what, you are, what people are going through in the various opportunities. To embrace each other no matter where you have come from. Like Solomon advised in Songs of Solomon 2 verse 15, for healthy community relationships to remain, we must take up the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender. What is the role of the Christians in promoting lasting relationships? Move forward. Practice true biblical love. Love is the greatest gift in the community and the glue that can make relationships stick. Love makes anything that relationship thrive. Any family that is founded on the love of God for each other has a strong foundation, whatever the challenges they may face. Number two, push forward. Respect and honor for one another. This will naturally lead to wholesome and stable communal relationships and bonds. Different numbers, members are called upon to treat others in specific ways in order for the relationship to thrive. Love and humility oils healthy family relationships. Before we go out there and honor and embrace people out there, I believe there are brothers and sisters who are hearing my voice here who must go and make amends. Say, brother, you hurt me. Real brothers, blood brothers. We say, actually, I, I, I want to forgive you and set you free for us to move on. Number three, making intentional and steps towards reconciliation and conflict management in the community. The old saying that time heals wounds is not completely true. It takes courage on one hand and humility on the other to initiate healing among hurting family members. We must confront, forgive, and move on as a way of building strong relationships and bonds among the family. An example is given there of Abraham and Lot in the book of Genesis, chapter number 13, verse 1 to, th 1 to 13. We can go home and read about these two people where they went out 
One went to the north, the other one on the other side of the, of the city. Along the way, there was pain in the family that was caused. But they came to a place one day, they forgave one another and moved on. Number four, upholding God's word gives the uttermost wisdom in establishing healthy community relationships. God has a good purpose for every person. He has put people in the communities for the greater good and for the profit of the society. Jeremiah 9 verse 10, 14 says, this is what the Lord says, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, and plans to give you hope and a future. Then you'll call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You'll be seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. That is the building of a community. God is out in the business of bringing us closer. Whatever, whatever we have gone through, whatever tribe you are in, whatever race you are in, God is the business of bringing us from the captivity that, are, that are, we, are, we are in, that we say others are not good like us, and God is calling us together and saying, now you come together. I want to bring you together and return you back to the place where I want you to be. We have been called by God to go out and become catalysts of healing and reconciliation in the community. Believers, we are the hope of this country. Where God has placed you, take advantage and become a catalyst for healing and reconciliation. Go out and preach peace. Go out and preach love. Not only by word of mouth, but also by action. And by God's grace, we'll be able to embrace each other and take deliberate efforts to build stronger communities among us. Today, I want to encourage us. Take a one step. On Wednesday, I asked my pastors one question I want to leave with you. I asked them, do we know our next door neighbor? And when is the last time you even said hi to them? I want to ask us today take up, take that step and say, I don't know why I'm doing this, but my pastor told me I should know your name. <laughs> they could have a bigger gate, but I just go and knock and say, hi, this other fence, it's me who lives this other fence. And I just came to say hi to you, and my name is so-and-so. I go to Stan Valley Road, and they were just doing safari embrace, and nice meeting you. Simple as that. And that's the way to begin building relationships. Take a step to the next person. A bishop comes to pray for us. I want us all to stand. I want all to stand and turn to your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Tell neighbor. You are my brother. You are my sister. And do this likewise. Give them a handshake and just say we are together and God loves us. Let's build our country together. Amen. Amen.